Greetings, everybody. Greetings, old friends. We're back again. We hope that you're with us in the second in our series of fall programs. And we are going to do more reminiscing today than what we have done in other programs. And I hope that uh, many old timers will, uh, will bring, bring back memories to you. Of course, that's uh, what we want to do. What happened uh, 36 years ago. Now, our program today, of course, is about the National Salt Conservation Field Day is a national plowing contest, which was held at Augusta, Wisconsin. I have some guests with me from Augusta, or they were from Augusta. And um, it, I must lay some background, if you'll put up with that. Why did this national plowing contest happen? Well, way back in the 1930s, the salt conservation movement really got underway. But along all, during all those years, there was always a question, how can we arouse people, more people, to realize what serious erosion is, wind erosion after the dry years, heavy rainfall when it did come, and uh, a lot of water erosion. And so a man by the name of Herb Planbeck, who was a farm director at, De at Des Moines, Iowa, WHO Des Moines, conceived the idea of a plowing contest, contour plowing contest, around the hill instead of up and down. And it was inaugurated in the Iowa state of Iowa, uh, we call Herb the grandfather of these uh, plowing contests. Uh, the state of Iowa had two contests. Then they moved to Illinois for one Indiana one, Minnesota one, and in 1953 uh, came to, uh, to Wisconsin. We put in a bid for it, and we got it. Now, uh, the uh, programs, uh, Wisconsin had had four state plowing contests, very successful, all sponsored by uh, our TV station, our radio station, WAU Radio. And then they sponsored the National, which was the fifth time. We had to select a site, first of all, a large site to handle the National. And so we got busy and we ended up near Augusta. And uh, there were ten, there were eight farms involved. Now I'm going to stop and introduce you to a couple of the few remaining living people of the farmers who owned land uh, and that was there. Way over on my right is Walter Lutke. Walter, good to have you here. I'm glad to be here. I bet you thought about this thing a good many times. Oh, yes, quite a number of times. Yes. Now, Walter, at the time of the contest, your father and mother were living. Yes. And you were with them. Yes. Yeah. And your dad was, I think, the oldest of all the uh, people who owned the farms there. Mm -hmm. And he had a good sense of humor, and I was a little afraid he wouldn't go along with some of these things, but he sure did, didn't he? Oh, yes. Yeah. He enjoyed the whole... Thing too. I think he did too. And then Mrs. J. Ballot, Leona Ballot. Leona, so good to see you. Well, real good to be here. Now your farm was kind of the headquarters as the farms go um, for the um, things that happen. You must uh, think about this many, many times. Well, I sure do. It was quite a year. It was quite a year. And it wasn't just it was a couple of days. It oh, was no. all year, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. It was the whole year. Yes. And um, then, of course, uh, we're going to get into the big day, the big day when you put on the turkey feed and all that uh, for the folks there. Um, your farm was um, not a, a big farm, uh, 80 acres? 120. 120. Uh, mm -hmm. My memory's getting bad. Walter, you must have had about that much. Uh, yeah. About 90 acres. Yes. Well, let me tell our listeners then, too, that... Uh, uh, we this was a watershed, which kind of highlighted the conservation movement was talking about watershed control. And these eight farms, there were eight owners and I believe three renters. But of the owners, uh, it was it was pretty much a watershed. And water, we, putting all the fences had to come out, didn't they? Yes, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> all of them, I guess, except for a cornfield or two, maybe. Uh, so anyhow, that is a little background. I wish we could take time to tell our listeners more. Uh, but that's it for now, and we'll take a little break here and be back. And Walter, I'll start visiting with you first.
36 years. Walter, Walter Lutke with me from the plowing contest area in Augusta, 36 years ago, Walter. A lot well, of things happened. Well, a lot of things happened and changed since then. Yes, and <laughs> since then, and the time has gone so fast. Well, Walter, let's for our listeners review a few things that happened down there. Let's take your, you were run one of eight farms that was about a thousand acres total in a watershed. What, uh, what did this uh, do to your operations for a, a year getting ready for it? Did it upset you quite a bit? Well, it did. Um, we were probably the first ones that were involved. The uh, Conservation Commission, later the uh, DNR, started working on the stream banks in March. Oh, yes. And, uh, well ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Yes, well ahead of time. So we were pretty busy from that time on up until about midsummer when more activity started all in the other areas. All over the place, yeah. Now, uh, let's uh, just as describe a few of the practices that went on. I'll mention, first of all, that we built terraces on the ballot farm. Now, what are some of the other ones that went on around there? Well, the practices. That terraces were built on the ballot farm on Johnson Place and Fred Sell Farm. Yes, diversions and, uh, of terraces, uh -huh. Then the waterway was um, redone, starting from the stream on our farm up through the ballot farm. And got, that was made ready for um, tiling the day of the plowing contest. You did tile the day yes. of the plowing contest. And um, I'm glad you mentioned that, Walter, because uh, and I tell the listeners, all these practices took place on those two days, didn't they? Yes. The operations. Mm -hmm. The waterway was completed by that time, but then the tie-in operations were yeah. Uh, yeah. done on those two days. Mm -hmm. And uh, the soil st uh, structure is such that Next to the stream, you have good drainage with uh, sand subsoil, but as you get farther up towards the hills, there's hard pan and, uh, of course, a lot of wet spots in the yes. fields, and that was the reason for the tiling. Oh, the tiling. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'd say approximately two miles of tile lines yeah. were put in. Yeah. I remember over on uh, Irv Canoe's farm, by the way, Walter, Irv was sort of the spokesman for the group, wasn't he? Yes. As an Irv is gone, I think Mrs. Canoe's still living? She's living oh, in Augusta. That's great. Uh, uh, I remember they resurrected an old spring that was kind of, used to run spring water, it was pretty much clogged up. But on that day, or those two days, they resurrected it, got it dug out, and put in a tank, a watering tank. Yes. Okay? And fenced it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was um, just over the hill in the uh, opposite valley from where the uh, tie lines were laid. Yes, you're right there, yeah, yes. But yeah. it did a lot of good. Yes, it's, that it, was a worthwhile thing. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I'm sure it worked for quite a few years, didn't it? Well, it still is. Is it? Yes. Good to hear. 36 years ago. Uh, a lot of forestry work, Walter. Yes. And um, I own that place now where most of the forestry work was done. The tree planting? Yes. Yeah. And uh, that's where I'm presently living. I see. And um, some of the trees that were planted in Norway's up on top of the one hill there are probably 12 inches through and probably 40 feet tall they or better are, uh, by now. Uh, it would be Norway pine, some white pine, I suppose. Yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, and then um, I also uh, always tickled me that on the Avery Markham place, he had no water back in that uh, 60 or 80 acres, whatever it was, and uh, an outfit to show their works came in and drilled a well for it, didn't they? Yes. The well is still there. It's not in use. But it's not it's used, but it's still workable then. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, a very much needed well. So they were able to demonstrate their equipment and how to do it and uh, do some good along with it, too. And it was right next to the um, display area, too, so they had water yeah. for the flying contest. You're right. It's, it serves the water, yeah. Walter, I've got to ask you um, about uh, the stream bank and all that along there. How did that all turn out afterwards? Would you appraise it? Well, it turned out very well. Uh, of course, stream bank improvement is not a job you do once and then forget about it. Yeah, I see. Because it yeah. continually yeah. <laughs> uh, creates new problems. Mm -hmm. uh, they started there, I would suppose, in April. And where the banks had um, were overhang, they took the black dirt back and then piled rock in there and then reseeded the banks. And then, of course, the waterway was um, constructed so that it drained into the uh, stream. And that needed a little follow-up work the following spring. 
about a dam was put in on a tile outlet. And uh, the long tile line normally, except in a very, very dry year, runs about it does. Uh, oh, half full of a 10 inch it does. tile. All the time. Mm -hmm. How about that? I, uh, you took me out there one time, I don't know, five, ten years afterwards, and of course, that stream was all bare, cattle on each side, or, yes. yeah, it was very bare and so on, and it was a regular jungle, wasn't it? it <laughs> yes. And, yeah. Is it still pretty much that way? Well, um, the owners now have been pasturing it, but uh, there are a lot of trees there, and uh, like you say, the undergrowth was so thick you couldn't even crawl through it. So uh, it is, uh, it's good to pasture it, uh, Limited base to some extent. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Walter, um, uh, I'm thinking about what are your thoughts on the crowds of people that were there? There were a lot of people there. Did we? Yes. What was the estimate on the last day? Uh, the last day, some 80, 85,000, yes, something we like had that. A lot of figures. But from what we see in here, I, I, I don't think that would have been too far out. And we had a, a tremendous parking lots, and there were thousands of cars. Yes. There? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. There were four parking lots that I remember right. Yes. Plus the airstrip. Yes, an uh, airstrip for people to fly in. They flew in from quite a few states, didn't yes. they? Yeah, to see this affair. Um, the irrigation job, I got must talk to you about that. We had, Walter, a, um, on the first day we had a plowing contest for all the counties in Wisconsin. Yes. So to determine who the Wisconsin winner would be to enter the yes. national the next day. Do you know who that winner was? What county? Uh, no, I can't no, remember I that either. anymore. I don't either. And then we had a level land plowing contest, too. Uh, and a winner that entered the national on Saturday the next day. But what I'm thinking about, of course, the highlight was the Condor plowing contest. And that was the going around in the circle, you know. But uh, down in your place, we were going to have a national level land. But uh, it was such a dry year, and that old pasture or hay ground was so hard. Tell us what happened. How did we get ready for it? Well, we, uh, it was very dry that year, so I contacted Moulton Irrigation from Somerset, Wisconsin, and they came down and brought an irrigation pump. And uh, When did they arrive? On Friday, wasn't it? Yeah, that was... Right, the last minute. A day or two before. Yeah, I think just the day before. And uh, I know the stream didn't furnish water enough. They had to dam it up so that they hold the water. So they I don't think enough. I knew that. Yeah. But they laid down, what, two inches of water that yeah. night. Yes. And it was a beautiful sight. <laughs> I, um, I had the state level land contest. And then the next day, the uh, national level land contest was on um, Fred Sells. Uh, All 20 right, acres. I got it turned around then, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. But anyhow, the night before, then they laid that water down. And that I don't think a plow would have gone in that ground. But it sure did after that uh, nice soaking uh, uh, rain that they put on it. Well, there's so many things that uh, we sh should or could talk about, uh, uh, Walter. Um, how did you feel that the whole community felt about the, having it there? Well, they were very enthusiastic about it, um, and the businessmen in Augusta uh, cooperated very, very well with Gerald Strader and uh, Clarence Hearn that had stores in Augusta. Yes, yes, yes. We had wonderful cooperation. I remember, we've got to cut right here, Walter, and take a breather, and then we'll be back, and I'm going to visit with Mrs. Ballot uh, about another phase of it, and then we will be back with you again. So for now. The Colfax High School Biology Department is currently working on a community service project referred to as the Red Cedar Watershed Project. Being centrally located along the Red Cedar River, we will collect results from area schools. These results may be used by the Department of Natural Resources for their use in research. We would like to see many improvements in the quality of our local lakes and rivers. As members of the Tainer Monoman Lake Improvement Association, we are deeply concerned about our water. We'd like to see something done about it, and if we don't care, who will? Old friends, we're back again talking about 36 years ago, the National Plowing Contest and Conservation Field Days at Augusta, Wisconsin. We talked to Walter Lutke as one of the few living farmers that own land there. Talked to Walter and he'll be back with us again for a summary. And now we're going to talk to Mrs. J. Ballot, Leona Ballot. And Leona, your farm was sort of the headquarters for a lot of things, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yes. And Jay was your husband. Mm -hmm. Jay didn't, uh, how long did Jay uh, 
the last after the contest? Well, he died in 1960. 60. But he had a heart attack in 55. All right. I think some of us thought maybe we worked him too hard uh, getting ready for it. But anyhow, he enjoyed it, didn't he? Oh, he, you, he was really yeah. thrilled. Now, let me ask you, you had um, at home with you there a son and a daughter, am I right? And um, I had four children, three girls and a boy. Yes. But before we get into the field day part, a feed company, as an idea, brought out a boy and girl, brother and sister, were they? Yes. From New York. From from New Jersey, I or think New they Jersey. were. And to spend a, a week with you folks. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they lived with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about them. Well, the, the boy was my daughter's age. They were 15, yes. and the, the girl was my son's age, uh -huh. 13. Were they ever on a farm? They had never been on a farm before. They didn't know what milk came from or where no. the eggs came from. <laughs> no. Well, that was the idea that this feed company had in mind of, of bringing them out. And uh, Now, they took a lot of your time because you folks really, you had 4-H club meetings there? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what else? Well, and, uh, well they uh, did all, saw all of the farm work. They helped yeah, with unloading silage mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. baling hay and everything that we had to yeah. do. And then you took them to other places uh, for each some meetings and things. Yeah, well, they went yeah. to our orchard and picked apples. And, and uh, well, they, we were really busy from there. They had a great experience and a great learning process for them. And now to summarize that, there's lots we could say. Did you keep any track of them afterwards? <clears throat> I <clears throat> heard from them uh, a year ago last Christmas. Good. But this, this year I didn't hear Isn't from them. Right? But uh, I'm going to try and get in touch with yes. them again. Well, that would be nice. Those yeah. kids are 50-some years old, aren't they? Oh, yes. The kids mm -hmm. are, yes. All right, now, uh, you folks had a lot of conservation work done on your farm. And the morning of the National Field Day, I hosted a tractor tour around the 1,000 mm -hmm. acres. And on that little wagon, I had uh, Ezra Taft Benson, who was the Secretary of Agriculture, uh, Governor Walter Rennebaum, and a lot of our own, uh, not a lot, we didn't have room for a lot, but several of our own committee members mm -hmm. and myself, and we showed them everything planned and so on. Now, getting just before noon, we got pretty hungry. We smelled turkey way up on the field side up there. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what you prepared for. Oh, we had a regular turkey Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah. We had turkey and all the trimmings. And now, you had a lot of help, I'm sure. Oh, yes. My mother-in-law cooked the dinner. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And there was lots of help. Yes. And um, I'm going to show uh, just this picture. I wish you could show more. You have so many pictures. And here we are around the table. And right in the center is Mrs. Ballot, because she had so much help. She didn't have to serve the turkey, fortunately. <laughs> and on her, <laughs> let me look, on her right is Ezra's half Benson. Who I think is still alive, and uh, he must be well in his 90s. And Governor uh, Kohler. Governor Kohler, what yeah. did I say? I, I don't know, but oh, you're yeah, going Governor Kohler, Kohler thank <laughs> you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and then some of the rest of us see Bob Nelson uh, here. He was representing the station, the program director uh, of uh, uh, WAU Radio and Harry Hyatt, the manager, and they were great supporters of conservation, and they sponsored all this. All right, now, uh, did you ever have a crowd like that at your Thanksgiving table before? Oh, yes. Yeah, I, I have a big, we have a big, a big relation, family. and yes, we yeah. had lots of big family yeah. doings. But you probably never had the Secretary of Agriculture. Oh, no, I never had <laughs> such important people. <laughs> well, uh, uh, a number of these people I see on here are some of our local farmers and, yeah. and so on. I, I, I can't mention everybody, so I won't mention any. And myself, and, and Jay, I don't see him in the picture, but he's there right close, your husband, yeah. Um, what is, uh, uh, what were the after effects as far as your family was concerned? Well, it was, um, it, it really did a lot for the farm. Our crops were very much better because of, the, of that uh, drainage, drainage that they had. Oh, yeah. And there was a um, pond that we never could work, and they drained that, and we, could, we could work all of that uh -huh. land. Uh -huh. Well, now, these weren't any ponds standing with water. They were just 
areas that were too just a little bit too wet from seepage like Walter described mm -hmm. on the, under, under the soil there. Now, I don't think, uh, we built terraces on uh, your property. I don't think Jay ever liked them too well, did he? I don't, I don't know. You know I, he did, I don't well, he, he didn't say too much about them. No. Yeah. Well, but, we talked about them a lot, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what, um, you remember the concession area, the big area there? And, uh, well, I didn't see too much of no, too much of it. I was yeah. busy with yeah. everything else. Yeah. But after the plowing contest, we drove around the the road that they had I, taken yes. and to see everything. Uh -huh. that, well, that was a nice time to. Now, I understand. See, this was Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. That we should have stayed open on Sunday, right? That a lot of people carried there on Sunday. I I didn't know yeah. about that. Well, they, they did. I think you have to ask Walter about <laughs> yeah. that. But I understand that there were a lot of people came after it was over with just to drive around and mm -hmm. see what happened. Of course, the um, you remember I had a little trailer up there that I stayed uh, stayed there overnight uh, for. Uh, I, I want to tell you, Mrs. Ballot, this is something I wouldn't I wanted to miss once, but I, I wouldn't want to do it again for anything. <laughs> no, it was quite quite a year. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say this, that I was, uh, I think I weighed maybe 190, 95, my usual weight at the start of that. Mm -hmm. But the day it was over, I was down to 165. <laughs> so <laughs> I started eating again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but day and night, as all these uh, big trucks rolled in with machinery, mm -hmm. it, um, it, it just kept me, bouncing me out of the trailer bed right along all night to show them where to, where to uh, park and, and all that. Any particular thing that I've missed here about uh, the band, yes, your banquet, or anything else that we we could get in here? Well, I, uh, the thing that I thought was so great was all the people in the county was there to help. Yes. They would help yes. tear up fences and yes. put put them back and them it back. was just wonderful the cooperation that yeah. it, it was. It, it truly was the businessmen and, and yeah. Augusta and uh, very just everybody. Everybody pitched just, in and, just did pitched in and helped. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to uh, I think maybe get a time here because when we summarize I've got a lot of things. Do you remember this? Yeah. <laughs> now there is a nice loud deck tie isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> and each of the each of the farmers uh, and landowners got one, and uh, the committee got one. And when we wore these, if you glanced someplace and this thing reflected in the eye, you knew it was one of the, the <laughs> workers or, or farm owners. It says National Plow Contest, Augusta, 1953. Also, while we're, um, well, maybe we won't, uh, won't start this, and we can hopefully have enough time afterwards uh, to uh, tell a little bit about uh, many other features that uh, took, took place uh, during the time. Uh, when did you leave the farm? In 1962. No, and the ballots had a wonderful uh, Jersey. Jersey herd. Jersey oh, herd, yes. yeah. <laughs> and the boy and girl from New York saw a lot of jerseys so yeah. while they were out there. All right, we'll take a break here now. We're going to come back and hope we have enough time to do a little summary and get in a few highlights of a few things we haven't covered yet. to summarize the National Plowing Contest going back 36 years ago. Mrs. Ballot has so many pictures I wish we could have shown all of them to you, and she handed me this little, uh, uh, what do we call it, pennant or whatever it is, or pennant uh, advertising the plowing contest, and, the, and she has many ribbons, so does Walter and so on there too. Walter, let me ask you first, do you remember who won the National Plowing Contest? I can't remember the person's name. It was uh, somebody from Ohio. From Ohio, yes. I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, was that the contour plowing contest or the level land? Uh, that was the contour. That was the contour, yeah. That was the big one. And I remember the whole crowd, the people up on the hill were looking yes. where all the plowmen were. When they gave the signal, how many do we have? 25, 30, didn't we? 
states represented? Something like that. Something like that. And of course, uh, the day before, that many counties. Well, um, do you remember, uh, I have to tell this, Irv Canoose was, um, of course, kind of represented the, uh, the group. And on the morning of the National Power Contest, he had a police escort from his farm up to the radio station to go on the air early with the state council conservationist. And uh, Irby had the fastest ride he ever had in his life, and everybody got out of his way, too. And then, um, do you remember, did you remember listening to Everett Mitchell? Oh, yes, quite well, quite he, often. He, he put on a Saturday, uh, what they call it, they called the Farm and Home Hour, didn't he, every Saturday. From WBBM in uh, Chicago. Chicago, yeah. And Everett Mitchell would open it up always. It's a beautiful day in Chicago, and I hope it's just as beautiful wherever you are. And then he might say, oh, it's 20 below zero, and the wind is blowing 40 miles an hour, but it's a beautiful day in Chicago. Well, this day, he opened his program up at noon. It's a beautiful day in Augusta, Wisconsin. I hope it's just as beautiful wherever you are. And he was a well-known uh, back in those days and covered a lot of territory, yeah. So we were always kind of tickled about that. Uh, do you remember the concession? We had a lot of... Uh, Oh, there was uh, all of the uh, churches and everything had yes. eat stands, and, stands. and there was uh, there was a big area with tents and oh, things. Oh, huge area. Yeah. And Walter, lots of machinery. Lots of machinery. Every yes. tractor and machine company yeah. had lots there and demonstrated. And there were wagon tours. Yeah. I think there were 25, 30 wagons. It must have been. That mm. people could jump on the hay rack and make this tour. There were roads all over the 1,000 acres there, yes, yeah. Uh huh. Do you remember who entertained us on the first day, Mrs. Ballant, up in the stand? Um, Wasn't that Homer and Jethro? Yes. Yeah, Did yeah. you see them? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Homer and Jethro the first day. Mm -hmm. And then you remember both of you. We all remember Maggie and Scotty. Oh yes. And they were there, uh, lending their talents to the show on on uh, several occasions. I know that. Uh, were you, of course, you were at the Plowman Banquet. Oh, sure. That was that was really nice. Full house, wasn't it, Walter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was held in the, the old American Legion Armory, where our post office is now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was full. What do you remember, Mrs. Ballard, about the, um, we had the Queen of the Furrow selected, too, competition? Well, I don't, I don't remember who it was that won it, but I have a... a clipping of her picture and all about it, but I don't have it right here. Well, I wish we uh, just take the time to dig that out and yeah. to get her name because I don't remember her name either. But that was always a kind of a big part of these bowling mm -hmm. uh, contests. Well, I think that uh, we've covered um, at least some of the uh, uh, some uh, some of the things that uh, happened. I'm so glad you came in with us and uh, and you say hello to Herb Zank and we wish you could have had Herb with us too, but. Uh, on a program like this, <laughs> you can't, it's easy to get too much. So, yeah. Now, I do want to end up then by, um, you help me out on this if I'm getting anything wrong, Walter. Uh, this was in 1953. Now, what happened the next year? The next year, the University of Wisconsin picked up and started Farm Progress Days. Yes. And they've never missed a year, have they? No. And Farm Progress Days have been held all around the state in various places. And see, what year are they scheduled here now? Yeah, back in Eau Claire County. 91. 1992. 1992, Eau Claire County will host Farm Progress Days. So in general, we can say um, we'll be back to where it all started, won't we? Yeah. Maybe what we've said here uh, will give a, uh, I don't think they've selected the site yet. Uh. Sounds like it might be right in our area, though. I've heard a little bit about <laughs> just the possibilities on that, too. Well, we'll wait and see. Thank you so much again. We must wind things up. And, um, well, maybe when it's uh, 40 years or 50 years, we'll get together again and reminisce <laughs> yeah. before. We'll, yeah. Okay, thank you so much. And goodbye. <laughs>
everyone. Old timers, well, we're going to be talking to you old timers today, and we're going to bring back memories to you, too. Nice to be with you again. And you might be wondering why I've got such a get up on. But we're going to be threshing today, or talking about threshing. And who of you in our group of elderly people haven't had some experience at threshing time? If you didn't live on a farm yourself, you probably, your sister did, and you went out and helped her prepare the meals for the threshers. Or if uh, your brother lived in the farm, you out and helped him maybe that threshing day, and so on. And of course, it was always pretty dusty threshing. We will be talking about some of those things. And so it was nothing that you usually wore a big old red handkerchief tied around your neck to keep the dust from going down. And uh, a straw hat, I couldn't find a really good farmer's straw hat anymore. Uh, but uh, I got one for the coaster that I wear gardening. And the jacket, somehow it shrunk. It's too small for me. And I don't have a bib, bib overalls anymore, which we used to wear. Farmers, trashermen, and all. Now today, uh, yes, uh, threshing. And I've got two guests with me, and we're going to enjoy visiting with them. Now we have Lyle Dahlgren. Lyle, you know a lot about threshing. Well, Pat, uh, yeah. good to it's see nice you. to be here. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. And what part of the country were you born and raised in? I was uh, born and raised down in Arkansas, Wisconsin. Down near Durand. Near Durand, that's all right. right. Mm -hmm. And you grew uh, barley, oats, wheat, and all those things. Oh, yes, yeah. you bet. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, I just enjoyed uh, having uh, Mrs. Bullis. Uh, with us. Mrs. Bullis, so good to have you here. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. And you're going to tell us about how you fed those thrashers in days gone by, right? I remember very well how I fed them. Oh, sure. <laughs> we'll talk about it. First, I think people will be interested in knowing, of course, I knew your husband, Vern, very well. And uh, where was your farm? <clears throat> it was out on 53, and it's where the new Oakwood Mall is now. <laughs> It's, um, it doesn't look like it used to. You wouldn't to. recognize it. <laughs> no. I try to figure out where your buildings were, and I, I can't I can't do that. Well, now we're going to start, and uh, we're going to take a little break here, but we're going to, uh, I, I'm going to say this, and we'll uh, start out uh, with uh, shocking the grain. We're going to uh, have a binder to, to bind the grain and put it all into bundles and into the shock. And let's say it's all shocked now. You remember those beautiful fields this time of the year, a little earlier, with all the shocks uh, in the field? Well, that's the grain and uh, what we're going to talk about. And then we're going to start with Lyle and uh, see what we did with those shocks. So that's it for now, but we'll be right back. Once again, old friends, we're back again at thrashing time. Well, I took the handkerchief off. He told me, uh, Lyle told me I wouldn't have to tin the, uh, the the straw pile or the grain spouts, and those are the dirty places to work with the dust and all that. So I took them off, and uh, they were a little too warm anyhow, Lyle. Well, Lyle, let's say now that the uh, we got the grain all cut and it's in shocks. That's right. Going way back in, into those days. That's right. What are we going to do with that grain now? What do uh, we? Yeah. We're going to shock it up now. Well, it's shocked. Let's say it's oh, shocked it's in the field. Shocked. Now we're going to. What are we going to do? Well, I think we ought to stack it, don't we? Stack you? it. That that was the old way of doing it, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Now describe the stacking a little bit. Well, what we used to do in stacking, we used to start a pile in the middle, start the shocks, the bundles in the middle, and work out. Uh -huh. Then we got out so far, we always tipped them up a little bit toward the, the outside row. We tip up a little bit so it drained. So they drained. So drain, uh -huh. Water would drain uh -huh. off uh -huh. so it wouldn't get wet. Otherwise, yeah. it soaked. Yeah. And uh, you'd start a big base, maybe uh, 10, 12 feet across. That's right, 10, 12 feet across, that's right. And we'd haul the bundles in and that's pitch them right. off to you if you were, did you stack? Oh yes, I did you some did. stacking, yeah. I never, uh, my dad tried to teach me, but uh, before I learned how, he was good, he knew yeah. how to. Well, my dad does most of the stacking uh, too, but I did uh, stacking toward the last. Yes, the well now, uh, uh, later on we got to shock thrashing. Now what do we mean by that? Well, that's sending bundle teams out into the fields, out into the field, and uh, loading the bundles onto the wagon and hauling them in, 
and feeding them right into the... Right to the threshing right machine. Threshing. We skipped the stacking. That's right. Then we skipped the, skipped the stacking. Well, now, that was quite a lot of work. What were the advantages of stacked grain, though, however? Well, I don't know. I think cause they've got a better quality of grain, grain out of it. If you left it in the, the stack long enough. If you stack long enough. Uh -huh. But if you didn't, it was worse. It was worse because it would be That's heating, right. I guess That's they right. called it, it or, heat. or in, 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 in the sweat fire, <laughs> we used to call it. But uh, yeah, I see it. But if you left it go long enough, it was a beautiful way to, to protect grain, wasn't it? That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's and, right. Then, and then when you once got in the stack, you didn't have to worry about a storm knocking the shocks over or anything like that. That's right. Yeah. All right. Now then, um, uh, in, in the uh, shock crashing game uh, later on, um, uh, what about... Uh, uh, let's get to the threshing equipment now. And back in those days, what did we have for power? Well, we had the old steam engine. The old steam engine. You bet you. And that was a lot of power, wasn't you it? You bet it yeah. was. <clears throat> they used to figure a 20-horse steam engine was equivalent to about a 60-horse gas. Yes, and mm -hmm. well, there you have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I remember we as boys used to have to... Uh, uh, get wood ready for the oh, yes. for firing that steam engine. And we'd gather up all the old posts and any other junky wood so as to have it there where he was going to uh, uh, park the engine and, and, and do the threshing. And then we had a uh, <laughs> we had the, the water boy and a water tank. That's right. Because we had to have to get steam. We had to have water, didn't we? That's right. Yeah. yeah. This uh, and the water wagons used to. I uh, always had a fellow and had a team on a water wagon and they'd go to a creek at our area. Yes, go we did. Go to a creek and, yeah. and pump that, pump the, had a hand pump on them. It was a lot of work, wasn't it? You bet. And they'd uh, suck all that water out of yep. the creek into the yep. fill that yep. tank and then they'd go to the... Go to the ramp. Right. And the I ramp. remember when I was a boy and the man who did our thrashing, he had a boy my age and this boy was the water monkey, we called him. He went for the water. But I went with him down to the creek. And we got to playing around with frogs and fish and tadpoles. <laughs> and we were in trouble when we got back because everything was closed down. Sure. No water, they couldn't have any steam. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now let's, uh, I remember the big belt went from the steam engine over to the separator. The big Tell us belt. about the separator, yeah. the threshing machine. Yeah. That, you mean the, the belt, uh, that was just the, the big belt. The that big went, belt, that's yeah. the drive belt, That yes. drove the that whole... That had a half twist and yes, half turn. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, describe the, uh, the separator, the threshing machine itself. Well, the threshing machine itself had a, <coughs> it had a, what they call a, a feeder. Yep. A feeder, uh, some had wing feeders and some had just a single feeder. The smaller, plane, the smaller separators had just a single feeder. Mm -hmm. And uh, you drive up the close you could and sit the bundles into that. Mm -hmm. And some of the bigger machines had uh, wing feeders, they called it. Yeah. One on each side. Uh -huh. And they'd uh -huh. load that feeder up and then go in and go to the, to the hopper where there was knives to cut the band. Yeah. And uh, then it went through the cylinder and through the concaves and through the cylinder into the screens, uh, we call them screens, they call them sieves, mm -hmm. and uh, from there on it was all flailed out and across the, the, uh, the grain racks they call them, and uh, the straw rack was above and the grain racks below. So the, the uh, grain would go through that mm -hmm. and go through the sieve and the top would go back to the, the straw and the top would go back to the blower and the, Blow it into the stack. Yeah. And the grain would come out a spout on, a, on oh, its right. own, that's and right. you had to have a man there. We call him the sacker. Yeah, that's right. That's he right. sacked the grain, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us um, uh, some places. Our, our thrasher man used to uh, just charge by the sack. However, there is a weighing bucket up there. Tell us about that. All right. The, the later machines, well, I think they came out about 1914 or 15. They come out with a, what they call a heart weigher. Several different companies used the same wear. No, I'd say, sure. It's called a heart wear. Mm -hmm. And that held a half a bushel. Yeah. And on that, every time you changed from one kind of grain to another, you had to ch change the weigher sure. over. Sure. For oats, it was 32 pounds. Yes, yeah. And which was uh, half a bushel, would actually mm -hmm. be 16 pounds. Yeah, I'd rather half. And uh, barley was 48, rye was 56. And uh, wheat. wheat was 60, 60 pounds. pounds to the yeah. bushel. Yeah. But the weir held a half a bushel, so we set down at half, mm -hmm. each a half, mm -hmm. see. And then, of course, each, his charge would be how many times that dumped and uh, so That's much right. a bushel That's for it. Right. Yeah, now, our man would charge by the sack. Now, sometimes if the grain was uh, 
heavy, he was taking a beating, but if it was light, he was doing pretty well, wasn't he? Yeah. Bet. Because I don't know whether, our, I think our old-time listeners know, from one year to the next, there could be an awful difference in you the bet. quality of the grain. Yeah, that's you, right. You might have a sackful that's only a bushel one year, and the next year a sackful would be a couple of bushels. Yeah, up to three bushels. Yeah. Now let's spend just a little minute here on the, um, th now that, that man who run the sacker, he was mm -hmm. stuck right there. You bet. And if it was dirty and dusty and the wind blowing, mm. he was in a bad place, wasn't he? That's right. He needed a red handkerchief and then something. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Now this, the, we built a straw pile, and that was pretty important in our day. My dad wanted yes, that bet. straw pile taken care of. Mm. And uh, uh, what kind of um, an elevator conveyor did we have to start with in the old machines? Well, in the older machines, they had a uh, conveyor, something like our uh, today's um, uh, bundle carriers, uh, not a bundle carrier, but a uh, hay bale yes, conveyor, something like that. Yeah, carried along. And they uh -huh. take it up into the, uh, to the straw stack, and up there they had several fellows that would, uh, uh, would um, take the straw and spread it out and make a stack out mm -hmm. of it. Make a good stack. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, usually I think we'd have about four men. Now, when you had a, an, a, um, a conveyor that way, then we built a straight across straw stack because they moved the straw. Now, when we came to a blower a little later on, mm -hmm. then you had these curved that's because right. they could run the blower. Yeah. You had a man run the blower, didn't yeah, you? That's right. And then you had kind of an yeah. arc in the straw stack. Mm -hmm. that, that and the later ones had a had a uh, automatic uh, blower that just goes yes, so far. Yes, that's right. Sure. Put a peg in a hole yeah. and that would go so far. And, yes, that's and, right. And, uh, that's right. Well. Uh, there's a lot we could say about these old fashioned oh, machines and all that. So. We're going to have to take a little break here now, and then we'll be back and we're going to, you know, when you were thrashing or we were thrashing, I'll tell you, it meant a lot what kind of a dinner we were going to get, didn't it? It sure did. It sure did. We're going to find out about that and in really a little while. Too. All right. <laughs> yeah, so now we could eat. <laughs> okay, we'll be back, old friends. Back again, old friends. I hope you're still with us. I'm getting hungry. How about you? We've been thrashing now uh, there with Lyle all forenoon, and it's looking forward to it. At least us uh, young fellows, and I think the old fellows too, used to look forward to getting in there to the to the big long table and dinner. And we have Mrs. Bullis here, and Salma Bullis from who told us that their farm is right here where the Oakwood Mall is, around that territory, some 300 acres. And Mrs. Bullis, you prepared a good many thrasher meals then, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Was this something that um, you had to do a lot of preparation for it, or did it come natural? <laughs> well, <laughs> there was just so much to do. Whether, and uh, we got ready for Oh, between 12 and 15 men every time. All right. And my sister-in-law, who lived on the same farm, would come and help me. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes a neighbor lady would come along with her husband. And sometimes some women from town liked to come. So uh, we had lots of help oh. in the kitchen. Sure. And some of it probably wasn't help, but they... <laughs> Well, you're, you're too polite I'm to say a very that, good boss. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> but I know a lot of our listeners probably right now weren't born on a farm, but I bet they got out to your place and other places at threshing time. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, um, it used to be fun to go uh, sure. to the next neighbor and, yeah. and help and, and you did visit. that too. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I was going to ask you, I, I think you said that you didn't have a summer kitchen at your place. No. Mm -hmm. Well, just a bit about the summer kitchen for any that remember it. I remember ours, and I remember it was just at the end of using it, and then it was torn down. But the summer kitchen was a building outside the house mm -hmm. where the women did all, they had the big stove, did all the cooking. And the reason for it, I believe, Mrs. Bullis, was so that the house wouldn't be too hot for the thrasher men when they came in. That's right. But they didn't have any consideration for the cooks. <laughs> they had to carry everything out to the summer kitchen. 
cook it, and then bring it back bring in and serve the thrashers. Mm -hmm. Well, the summer kitchen, and many times with a bell, a dinner bell on the top of it, and you pull the rope and call them in from thrashing or out in the field, wherever they happen to be. So uh, that, that got to be a thing of the past. Now, uh, what did you do? Did you have enough tables in order to seat well, all these thrashers? I had a dining room separate and a table that would seat 12. And if there were more, I would seat them in the kitchen to a, oh, yes. a, where the family mm -hmm. most of the time. Mm -hmm. And we had no problem about that. And of course, sometimes they didn't all come in right, at the, right oh, yes. away. I, see. I think uh, men, some of them stayed out and greased up the machine yes. and things like that. And, and watered and fed their horses? Yes, uh -huh. and uh, so we could reset again. I see. Uh -huh. So that was uh -huh. no problem. Well, now, that's, let's just think about what might that good meal that you prepared, what might it include? Well, it included, you know, meat and potatoes. And uh, we, for meat, we had ham or uh, Roast, roast beef, beef or roast mm -hmm. pork. My favorite was to cook a beef and pork together. Oh, I see. It made such good gravy. Yeah, oh, yes. that was important. Oh, yes. <laughs> and then we had vegetables, whatever was in season and what I had, mm -hmm. generally two mm -hmm. vegetables. And um, uh, well, if, the, if it was tomatoes or cucumbers or anything oh, like sure. that, you know, and I always had a big garden, so yes. I had that. I bet you baked a lot of bread. No. No? I have to admit I didn't. I see. But I made biscuits and oh, things. Oh, well, what? And uh, sometimes baking powder biscuits for its evening meal uh -huh, uh -huh, and uh -huh. with honey or, yeah. or some things to go with them. And when you were thrashing, you had the noon meal and the evening meal oh, to yes. serve. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah. And, uh, well, jelly or pickles if I didn't have, oh, like, yeah. tomatoes uh -huh, and things. Uh -huh. And then, of course, it got to pie. Uh, well, I was waiting for dessert. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, apple pie was the favorite. Yeah. Apple pie and I cheese think. at that oh, time, yeah. we always yeah. did. Sure. There used to be an old saying, apple pie without cheese is like a kiss without a squeeze. Well, now there's something. <laughs> Olsters and youngsters to remember. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, we'd have a berry pie or lemon, mm -hmm. most any kind of pie, but apple was a favorite. I think the so. The men liked that. And I that. remember, I'd have to tell you this, my father, uh, just to show you how much these meals meant to us, my father, I remember coming home from a neighbor one time after threshing, and that neighbor had um, green tomato pie. And he thought that was an insult to everything, to serve anybody green tomato pie. We never had it. Now, I've heard since, some people say it's good, say. But when we served, my mother served apple pie, you know, or something, and uh, green tomato pie. So he was all upset about that. <laughs> no, I've never eaten it either. Yeah. And then beef, I think, was what I used to remember, and pork. And we had one neighbor who had sheep, and he would, they would serve oh, uh, yeah. lamb quite often out there. Yeah. No, especially that. we didn't raise sheep. Yeah. No, we didn't either. And of course, we all was lots of coffee oh, and sure. uh, we always served milk. My family drank milk yes. so uh -huh. we always had the uh -huh. milk pitcher uh -huh. and they seemed to like the cold milk. The well, uh, men did. Always, always good. Uh -huh. And uh, there's the youngsters around there and there always were. Oh yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, oh, I, I, I didn't say anything about these men coming in. As you know, some years when we had rust in the grain mm -hmm. or smut and it would be so dirty. I remember a thrashing when we had rust on our, all over us, mm -hmm. half an inch thick. Yeah. And uh, did you have a place for them to wash up a little bit if they wanted to? We had a nice shed when the floor was level with the kitchen floor and we called it our woodshed, which it was. Yes. But in that, I had a nice sink, and we had the, the men came in there and washed up. Washed and, up. Uh -huh. and they generally were very thoughtful about yes. trying to yeah. keep this up. Yeah. I know sometimes some wouldn't. I think they wouldn't because they'd say, well, to wash up for just 15 minutes while we're eating, and then go back and get all dirty again, they wouldn't bother. But a lot of them, when you had it yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, well, that's was just very convenient to have that oh, oh, sure, woodshed sure. on there. Sure, well. And yeah. easy to get the wood from. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
And so many times these old, uh, the old uh, summer kitchens were part of the woodshed and yeah, everything yeah. too. Yes, yeah. yes. Did you have one big battery, or one big stove? I suppose your regular cook stove that you had all the time. I had a regular cook stove and a gasoline stove. That was out in the shed. Oh. And so I could put things out there if I didn't have room. Uh -huh. But I had a big kitchen uh -huh. range uh -huh. of the um, water reservoir on the end. Yes. And that was heated the water for the uh -huh. dishes and things. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. and, uh, uh -huh. and I suppose it was all that uh, crowd, but you had help, of course. You no more than got everything washed up and put away. It's time to get the evening get meal. the evening <laughs> meal. And that was generally uh, like cold meat. Uh -huh. And... Uh, if scalloped potatoes sometimes or fried potatoes and uh, oh the, well then they, we had um, uh, meatloaf I said and sometimes baked beans sometimes macaroni and cheese mm -hmm. and always a, a jello or something like that yeah. and soft yes. cake and cookies. Mm -hmm. If everything went normal, about how many meals did you have to serve at your house? We just served the two meals a day. Yes. And um, I would have, well, maybe four. Two days, I'm uh -huh. sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if they went home early, we would serve them coffee or something before yeah, they left. Before they, uh -huh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. I know sometimes you could be in kind of a dither when you didn't, something broke down or something, and they were there for a meal you hadn't yeah. planned on. <laughs> you can't tell what. <laughs> that, we, well, it used to happen. We, it used to happen. Yeah, yeah. And I canned my meat so we could make hot oh, beef. Oh, you're and always stuff prepared. Like always yeah. prepared. Well, we're going to say, Mrs. Bullis, it's so nice to have you tell us about all those things because it's rather typical of what went on up and down uh, Wisconsin. And we'll be back for a little summary after this rest. Okay. old friends for a little summary of what we've been talking about and maybe hit a few highlights of things that we missed. And we have Lyle uh, Dahlgren with us who farmed and thrashed and all that down in the Arkansas area near Duran. And Selma Bullis right outside of Eau Claire was their farm and where the um, all the mall is developed since. Lyle, uh, to you a bit here. About when did we change from the steam engines I mean, other than that, a demonstration from the steam engines to uh, gas and oil yes. power. Well, I'd say about uh, 1924, or uh, probably in that neighborhood, yes. I'd say. And of course, uh, some of course there were still steam engines going, but, yes, I see. but yeah. the tractors took over about they, that time. They were time. coming in. Uh -huh. Maybe 22 uh -huh. Uh -huh. started probably. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first I remember, yeah. anyway. Now, you uh, thrash for your neighbors. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, we bought a thrash machine in 1929, and we had quite an area that we'd done a lot of thrashing. How many would you make in the fall, do you think? Oh, uh, you mean... Uh, hey, how many different Oh, places? we'd make... Uh, Maybe around 20, 30 in the fall, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and uh, mm -hmm. different jobs, you know, yeah, yeah. for different neighbors, yeah. and through the area there, and uh, it was a good paying proposition. And what were you, you thrashed, uh, for, uh, thinking about our grains, we had wheat, barley. Wheat, barley, oats, and uh, rye. Rye. Now, you were called on to do some other kind of thrashing, too, off and on. Tell us about that. Oh, yes. Well, we thrashed the whole clover, for one thing. Whole clover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? Well, to our, <laughs> to our uh, younger kind of, listeners. Yeah, well, uh, they would, um, the second crop of clover usually one that had the seed in it. Uh -huh. And uh, after that was cut, and uh, the clover would be uh, dried so it would haul out. Yes. They'd put it into the machine then, and uh, we'd haul the clover. Oh, and this, after the clover attachment on the machine, had uh, what we call <coughs> uh, corrugated concaves. 
And those corrugated concaves were corrugated so it knocked the seed out mm -hmm. better than grain seed. Mm -hmm. And because the seed was much smaller, smaller. Yes, yeah, very small. And of course, go over the sieves, and then we didn't use the conveyor for that or a weir for that, like yeah. we did this yeah. for, for the grain. Yeah. But we took that out separate. So that was some pretty, could be some pretty high priced stuff here. Yes, it was. Uh, what about flax? Did you flax? ever run into that? Oh, yes. We did some flax. In flax, we, we raised some flax. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had uh, two farms there. We, uh, we had, and, and uh, we rented three others uh, mm -hmm. for a few, a few years there. Yeah. And um, so we had to put something in there. We had flax. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. it was a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, we didn't use, didn't grow flax, flax very often because it was too hard on the soil. Yes, it needed an awfully yeah. good soil too. We needed good yeah. soil for that. I was best acquainted with flax growing mm -hmm. over in Minnesota, where they grew quite a bit there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Mrs. Bullis, um, you you told us what you prepared for the thrashers. Now, so that nobody thinks that those are the only big crews you had to feed during the year. Did you shred at your place? Shred corn? We shredded. We you had about as many men for shredding, didn't the you? Same, the same crew same for number. corn. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The silo filling, we didn't have that much. A smaller help. crew. Oh, uh, yes. But it lasted longer quite often, yes. didn't it? Yes, and yeah. uh, that was right. It, yeah, and that, that came a little later after we got into the silos. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh -huh. and, uh, what else? Well, I bet you had a, did you saw a wood in the wintertime and have a, have a we, well, you see, we had, um, uh, we didn't very often have to have uh, extra help or sawing wood. Oh, I see. Because uh, uh, we had two hired men all oh, the time yeah. and yes, yeah. the boys, yeah. that was enough. Yeah. Of course, when Grandpa was there, he was always there helping. Yeah, sure. And, uh, and at that time, then, the me unless we had an extra, mm. I didn't have to feed them. Oh, I see. Oh, well, we used to have a little crew come along, at least when I, we boys were smaller, to help saw wood, I know that. The um, men and grandpa invented a wood splitter. Oh, yes. And it worked very well. I thought that was just a new, we see them here in recent uh, years, you he know. He had them back when. And it worked good. Mm -hmm. And he probably I was scared to death. On it. <laughs> I was scared to death to let him get the hand chopped off, oh but they didn't. <laughs> well, machinery always was dangerous. Yeah. And I think Lyle, uh, mm -hmm. there's a whole lot more danger out there in the farms now. It's, it's, I see where some statistics show the greatest uh, loss of life is in farming. Yeah, and, 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 and in that way. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But when you think of that uh, kind of equipment we have, it's, um, mm -hmm. it's no wonder. Of course, they do have better safety equipment now than they have back yes, then, too. Yes, they do. But a lot of people are careless about it, aren't they? Especially that. the corn shredders. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. We lost a lot of arms there, didn't that, we? Yeah. I can think of a lot of our neighbors who, before they know it, they were in, they were into the uh, into the rolls. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, did you, Mrs. Muller, did you say you folks had some equipment that you you did some of this work for the neighbors too? Oh yeah, they, they made they the round for the neighbors. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going to say, Grandpa invented a haycocker, and that the the one that he had for uh, to get the uh, what do you uh, the clover seed? Uh, no, no. Uh, it was uh, the one he made for a model to oh, take and oh. have it, um, what do you call it? Anyway, that's down in Madison oh, Museum. Oh, well, yeah. good. Uh -huh. Did he try to patent it? Or he did pat he that's he what I wanted. That's I wanted the word say. patent. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh -huh. Well, I see our time is up, and we could go on here talking about good things to eat at threshing time, and <laughs> as well as all the different kinds of equipment and so on. And, and I always think, well, you and I were talking, and I sure Mrs. Bullish, you agree. This is a... These are great experiences that we had that our younger folks don't have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's right. We, are, we're not on the air now? Yes, we oh, are. We're, 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 we've we've got to close it up, though, I guess, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sure we wouldn't trade any of it, would we? No, I, really I want, enjoyed it. Yeah. I wanted to say I wanted to take my, my great-grandchildren out to a farm, yes. and I've been going to take them to the Groff farm. Yes, yes. Well, we just didn't get around to it until they had this open house. Just the summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a wonderful yes, thing yes, it's for great. my little yeah. one. Thank you so much, Mrs. Bowles, for being well, with us. Very well, welcome. for coming in and talking Thank about you. old time threshing. Oh. And so that's it for now, folks. Exactly.